Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 107. Uh, today I want to start working with our capsule collider that we have, or sorry, our sphere collider that we have on our mobs. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. Now I've already got my Dungeon Guardian selected and I've opened up the sphere collider. Now I'm going to want I'm not going to want to have to manually adjust this for every mob that we place in game. Uh, but there are a few things that I do want to do, which we can do through code. Uh, if we notice the center on our character controller, uh, that's pretty much going to be the exact same center we want for our sphere collider. Actually, it is the, the same that we want for our sphere collider. And the radius, we could actually just set a default for that for all mobs and then adjust it according to maybe the perception ability of a mob. Uh, we're going to be using the sphere collider uh, for the on enter and on exit events. But let's start off with getting the center of our sphere to equal the center of our character controller. So I'm going to go ahead and open up model develop. And I'm in the AI script. I already have a reference to our sphere collider right here. So I'm going to go ahead and let me see, I don't have my controller. I'm going to go ahead and make a quick instance of my controller as well. So it's a character controller. I'll just call it CC equals get component. And of course the component we want is the character controller. And I'll do a quick check. So basically if the character controller does not exist, I'm actually going to put it after the, the check for our uh, sphere collider. And we'll just check to see if it exists. So if it does exist, I'm going to say that take my sphere collider dot center, which is way up here, which is a vector three, is going to be equal to my character controller dot center. And while I'm here, I'm also going to set the radius. And I'm going to start off with, oh, let's say 10. And I probably should put this up here as a variable. So I'll make it public for now and I'll just make it the first one. And I'll make it type float. And I'm just going to call it perception radius. And I'll start that off equaling 10. So basically this is, you know, the range that he can detect uh, your character at. And where was I? I was down here. So let's save that off. We'll head back into Unity and take a look. Uh, if we start it up. There we go. We notice the centers are the same. The radius automatically got set to 10. And the trigger is set. And we're not worried about the material. Uh, so where is he? He's right there. So let's go write our on trigger events. And I'm going to put them right after the update. So public void on trigger enter. Now this does make a parameter. But I'll get to that in a second. I'm just going to make my public void on trigger exit. And I believe it's a collider that it gives us. Now I want to isolate just one mob for testing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my mob generator. We'll just come up here, turn it off. I don't have any other mobs in the scene. So when I start it up now, uh, 
it runs towards me. Actually, what I wanted to do is throw some debugs in here first. So we'll say debug log. And we'll just let us know that we've entered. And I'll do the exact same thing down here to let us know when we've exited. So let's start them up. And right away you're going to see entered. So if I start backing up, I should be able to outrun them. Exit entered. It'd be better if he was still. So let's actually turn off the ability for him to move forward. And that'll be down here. And I'm just going to quickly comment out this message. So now when we start it, he shouldn't move forward. He'll still rotate around. But if I select him, I'm right on the very edge. So I'm going to back up a bit. I'll clear the console and move in. And you'll see, uh, let's rotate a bit so you can get a better view. You see, just as I enter the collider, which is going to be triggered with my, my own capsule collider. I might be able to get both in the same. There we go. So as my capsule collider collides with his sphere collider, that's when we get the enter event. And when we exit, there we go. So this is how I'm going to have him wake up and go to sleep. When I enter, he's going to be like, oh, there's something near me. Let's attack. And that's when he'll basically become active and go after us. And for now, on the on exit event, I'm just going to basically make him return back home. But that's obviously not the exact um, uh, behavior we want. We don't want it to run away just because we, you know, got 20 feet away from the mob. But we'll just save that off. Let's go in. And let's get our target now. Instead of being up here in the start where we went out, you know, found a game object, tagged player, and then assigned it to our uh, target. Let's actually start doing that down here. So I'm just going to comment out my debugs. I might still need them. And we'll work with this collider, which is we just called Other. So if we look at Other, Other has a lot of stuff attached to it. And there's you know, quite a bit of stuff you can do with it. But what I really want is just its trans. Well, I want to check its tag first. And there we go, compare tag. So if other dot compare tag, now this takes a string, and I'm using player. And of course we're going to want to close this in an if block. So what we're saying is if their tag equals player, then we'll get their transform and assign it to our transform. So let's see if you can get to their transform through other itself. Uh, yes, we can. So we're just going to say target is equal to tra uh, other dot transform. Because so I believe we are saving our target as a transform, which we are. And then down here, I'm just going to cut and paste this. And instead of saying target equals other dot transform, I'm just going to say target equals null. So we clear it. So let's go test this out. We'll make sure we have uh, the dungeon guardian selected. I'm going to hit clear. And I want to open up the AI script because I want to watch the target. Oops, we should get rid of the stuff that we put in the start. Uh, right here, I'm just going to comment it out for now. And if it works, feel free to delete it. I'll probably just leave it there. Make sure there's nothing important. Yeah, 
uh, feel free to leave it there if you want. Uh, I'm just, like I said, going to leave it commented out. So there he is. And his target is none. So let's move in. And as you can see, he now targets me. I move out, he loses target. So let's go ahead and enable his movement again. And he should chase me until I get out of range. And then he should just stop. Well, actually, he won't chase me because I'm not within range. He doesn't have a target to chase. So as soon as I enter, you notice how he chases me? And he just keeps running forward. Let me get out of his range. See how he just keeps running forward? So we're going to have to fix that. And down here where we have a check to see the target, we can come down here and just make an else block. And let's, let's just send in a uh, turn none and move forward none. We'll start it back up. Okay, so let's get him to chase me. And when I exit, he now stops. Let's try to keep him in the scene view so it's a little easier to see. And I've exited. All right.